Hey friends, welcome back to Hot News. Yeah, we're here back on UFD Tech. What's up with that instead of being on Hot News? Well, we're just trying to lead up to Computex strongly because we are on Monday, we're expecting the keynote from AMD at Computex to just reveal everything. So we just kind of wanted to do the hot news leading up to that for the main channel so that you guys, when we live stream AMD's announcement, you guys are here with us, joining us. Oh yeah. But today's video, let's talk about today's video sponsor, which is our website, UFD Deals. But oh wait, what's that? Oh, it's kind of changed a little bit now. It's actually UFD.tech because our friends over at .tech domains grabbed us a dope domain. So it's now UFD.tech and you can check that out for the best prices on all of the computer parts that you want to buy. Oh, you're looking to get a good deal on the current gen Ryzen? Mm, check out UFD deals because we post all the deals there. We get an affiliate kickback. You guys save money. It's a win, 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 win. So check out UFD.tech, my friends. Link for that will be in the video description. Now let's talk about what we have, which is a lot of Zen 2 news, a lot of X570 stuff, some oopsies, some doopsies, and some winsies, onesies. Moving on, so Zen 2, according to one of the latest videos out by Adore TV, we're looking at something for the 12 and 16 core chips that should be demoed at Computex, not necessarily announced for sale or even kind of with specs finalized, but what we're expecting is that AMD is gonna show their Zen 2 plus a Navi GPU off in much the same way that they did with Zen and Vega back when they were launching those. They kind of showed how it would perform and just kind of showed the performance, not the actual, no, anyways. So apparently there's a five gigahertz, 12 core CPU that's been floating around the internet. It can boost up to five cores. It's doing remarkably well in all of the testing. The 16 core chip can boost up to 4.3 gigahertz. Apparently at this time, they're still not ready for launch, but somebody did an all core overclock of 4.2 gigahertz and apparently ran it on Cinebench and got a score of just over 4,000 points, which sounds like a lot because it actually freaking is. Because if you compare it to the Ryzen 7 2700X, it's 1,800 points, which means that the new 16 core chip is over double what the 2700X is. But then if we compare it to the 1950X, which is AMD's 16 core Threadripper, it's 1,200 points higher than that. And then if we compare it to Intel's i9-7960X, that is still about like 1,100 points. And thanks to the help at this WCCF tech chart, the way that you match this score from the 16 core Ryzen is by having the i9-7960X clocked on all cores to 4.8 gigahertz. That's how you match this leaked Cinebench score, which is pretty freaking bananas. But also according to the Adore TV video, CPUs aren't ready to be shipped. It's basically gonna be a paper launch at Computex. I know some people commented in our previous video about all of this, that who was expecting an actual launch at Computex? And a lot of people, because a lot of people were expecting a launch at CES as well. But it does seem like we're gonna be waiting well into the first part of Q3 before we actually see the CPUs hit store shelves and they're still not quite ready with their clock speeds. But five gigahertz on a 12 core that can boost and it looks like the IPC improvement from AMD puts it well over Intel in a remarkable fashion. And obviously these are still leaks. This is not yet confirmed, but at the same time, the leaks are getting more consistent. The database entries that we're seeing for benchmarks is starting to show that this is very close to reality. Just like we would expect as chips come closer to launch, we are seeing benchmarks like this and it kind of confirms a lot of what Jim from Adore TV was saying all the way back in December. So pretty good stuff. But then we also have some more information about the RAM overclocking that's gonna be coming with Zen 2 on the X570 motherboards. And it appears that they're gonna natively support 3200 megahertz out of the box just by default. If you have a Zen 2 processor, 3200 megahertz shouldn't be a problem for you whatsoever. With the chips supporting overclocking up to DDR4 4400. So that's a much better memory setup than what we saw on the first generation of Ryzen. Obviously that was improved in the second gen. We went from 2666 to 2930 but AMD is continuing the development there where we should get a 3200 megahertz memory support from AMD out of the box. But speaking of motherboards, you know who loves motherboards? MSI apparently, because they make a lot of them. So their X570s look, which look pretty good. I'm actually kind of happy with some of the designs, especially with this uh, Meg Ace that they're showing off. Gaming Pro Carbon looks all right. Anyways, the point is that MSI uploaded a video about their motherboards for X570. 
and it was live stream. So MSI actually held a live stream of their X570 motherboard showing off all of the key features. They didn't really talk about the upcoming generation of processors very much because obviously they would be under NDA for that, but X570 motherboards is all the rage. And they said that those little heatsink fans that we're seeing on all of the leaked images, well, they're entirely necessary. Apparently this has not only to do with just the fact that the chipset's going to burn a little brighter than usual, but also the fact that it has RAID support for the M.2 slots and that can cause it to overheat. So they're putting fans on all of the X570 chipsets. Still no indication if we're ever going to get a B550. I would suppose that we would, but it's going to be probably just a little bit down the line when we see the lower end Zen 2 chips launch, because right now, from what we're hearing behind the scenes, most of the ones that are being demoed the motherboard makers are the 12 and 16 core flagships as opposed to the Ryzen 3 and 5s that we're expecting to be 6 and 8 cores because that's basically what we have now. It's just that they should have better clock speed and better IPC, but we'll see how that develops when it comes out. Are you somebody who's interested in picking up an X570 or are you just gonna wait to a B550? I'm curious to hear from you down in the comments down below. And then let's go ahead and talk about Navi because there is some more Navi uh, rumors information coming out, which is that Navi should be doubling the ROP count on everything to give it double the streaming processors up to 5,120 streaming processors is what it's been theorized and it's pretty uh We'll see how that goes and whether or not that actually comes true because it would be a departure from how AMD currently has the GCN architecture currently set up and it would indicate that they're actually massively changing the architecture, but Navi has been confirmed to be on GCN, so AMD would have to be changing it significantly while also calling it the same thing, which isn't necessarily impossible, it's just a little strange. But in case you didn't hear about the previous leak of Navi, which Sapphire representative totally uh, spilled the beans on, was that uh, the RX 3080, which is what we're expecting, should cost about $500 and be faster than an RTX 2070, which also costs $500. And then the RX 3070 should be faster than the 2060, coming in at $400, which is $50 more than the 2060, which that's kind of weird. But we'll see how much faster they are when they actually launch, if they actually launch, because, you know, AMD hasn't really said that they're going to be bringing out gaming Navi cards, just that Navi's an architecture. Hmm conspiracy theory for you to dwell on. You know what, it's another conspiracy theory for you to dwell on. Apple hates keyboards, just straight up. They just don't like them because they just, they continue to make things that are weird and broken. Anyways, they updated their MacBook Pros. They included an eight core option with the ninth gen Intel processors. Great, still got a thermal throttle like the last one. Good, you give me more cores, it's gonna perform about the same. Yay, Apple, thank you so much. Anyways, they apparently also updated their butterfly key switches again to hopefully reduce the fact that it's going to break again, which they said last time, so we'll see how much that happens, but they're also uh, expanding the repair program for the keyboards on the previous generation stuff, like Reese's MacBook Air, because those have broken keys, and they're gonna die soon, Reese. How does that make you feel? They're gonna die. You just bought a new keyboard, though, so what do you care? Anyways, thanks, Apple, creating stuff that is gonna thermal throttle and not be able to be typed on. Winning. You know who else is winning? Anybody who has $8,000 to drop on a smartphone, because, my friends, the most bougie, overkill, supremely, I kinda want it, this phone is now out and it's the Samsung Galaxy Fold with a Game of Thrones edition. It's like elegantly carved, it's made out of gold, it looks freaking gorgeous. Like the, the minutia and the detail on the back of this phone looks so gorgeous. But the $2,000 for the Galaxy Fold, that's a pittance. Add $6,000 for this Game of Thrones theme, okay? Cause that's how much it's worth, even after the ending. Moving on, speaking of something else that's a galaxy, but something that you can afford and you might want is that God Galaxy from Good Old Games, they are bringing out an update called 2.0 that should hopefully merge all of the different systems that are for your game launchers together, such as Steam and Uplay, and put them all in one place, but not just the game launchers, your friends too. So it's actually gonna integrate your friends list as well. So you have one library, one place to keep track of everything that you play, 
and one place to keep track of all of your friends, which for me is unnecessary because I don't play with friends. I like to play single player games, leave me alone. And then in case you found yourself wondering when you're gonna get a quantum computer, don't worry, okay? IBM's got your back. They're saying that they plan to commercialize quantum computers in the next three to five years. And my friends, you're gonna be commercialed. Don't worry, they're coming for you. They're gonna give you 58 qubit quantum computers. It's gonna be right in your pocket. You're gonna be able to crack Bitcoin no problem with all of your d super duper quantum research. Trust me, okay? It's coming fast. You know what else is coming fast? Bad password management from Google. Yeah, that's right. Apparently, Google stored business passwords in plain text for quite some time. In fact, I found out about this because they sent us an email letting us know that one of the persons on our team's emails was stored in plain text. So that's fun. Anyways, good job, Google. But they're working on it. Obviously, they sent out the update to make sure that people updated their passwords, but that doesn't help the fact that they probably got leaked somewhere and now everybody knows his password. In case you want to know what Intel's up to, well, there's a leaked roadmap for their Xeon processor showing off things such as Sapphire Rapids and Granite Rapids with PCI Express 4 support, DDR5 included, multiple, multiple cores, and up to eight channel DDR4 in Q2 of 2020. There's a lot of good stuff. You can check out the roadmap in the video description, but you know what else is being roadmapped? PC releases of Gears of War, because there's apparently gonna be two releases for PC this year, Gears of War 5 coming in September, at least according to some indications now, and then also another PC exclusive called Gears of War Tactics. So that's cool, or Gears Tactics. Same thing. And then, in case you want George R. R. Martin to finish all of the Song of Ice and Fire tales, well, he said, you know what? I hear you. I hear your plight that you want to know what the real ending is and it's not rushed like a six episode season. But I'm gonna work on a game with From Software. Yeah, that's the best use of my time and efforts. The people who made Sekiro, let's make a game with me! That's how I expect GRRM to speak. And you know what about Cyberpunk 2077? Cause totally related topics, we're talking about video games right now. If you haven't caught the theme of the past few minutes, Cyberpunk 2077 will not have a hands-on demo at E3 this year, which is super lame and kind of backwards from what they did last year. But actually it probably won't have a public demo for the public people, but then the press will actually get to play it like they did last year. Maybe they'll actually be able to show it off instead of having to silently record audio. I don't know, we'll find out. And then in the strangest headline of the day, something that I never thought I was going to say, and I know that there's probably a ton of opinions on Chick-fil-A, all I know is that their nuggets are delicious. But apparently, you know what else is delicious about them? They're AI, okay? Because they've developed AI that can spot signs of foodborne illness from social media posts with a 78% accuracy. Apparently, they're gonna be making this uh, algorithm available on GitHub. Okay, I, I got nothing. I. I don't have a snarky comment, but dang, they developed an AI framework and freaking works, okay? Well, that's the end of hot news. Don't forget to check out UFD deals in case you wanna save money on tech products that you're buying around the internet. Don't forget to hit the like button, okay? Do it, please. Don't forget to check out Linus's merch store, I suppose. You can do that if you want. And then just watch our Computex coverage, please. It'll make me so happy. I'm Brett with the Hot News Channel, which this is on UFD Tech, so I love you too, bye.